Blue eye. Wide lahan. Which is haida, meaning that everything is connected. Um, and the rest of it is mathematical adventures. So the the book. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, is a collaboration between uh, teachers and students and community members on Haida Gwaii, which and Haida Gwaii is located in the Pacific Northwest, um, just south of Alaska, a group of about 150 islands on the Pacific West Coast. And it was developed as um, a way of um, kind of thinking more about what role mathematics plays um, in the community and then trying to help think more about uh, how culture, mathematics, and community are all connected. So the community was interested in trying to think more about how, the, how to bring these collaboratively together um, and then also how to, um, I guess, to, how to kind of bring students, Haida students, and community and culture to education. You know? Because most often, especially math texts, are from a point of view of elsewhere, like not necessarily on Haida Gwaii. Um, and they were interested in trying to think about, you know, what would it look like to connect to this place, Haida Gwaii, and what would be some of the interesting uh, problems, mathematical problems, that could arise from that investigation. And I think that the work was more towards the making of it rather than the product and the end of it. Mm -hmm. So the, the, the collaboration with the elders and community members and the teachers was a big part of it. Um, and then the producing of it in the end uh, is something that's sold, for example, in the museum on Haida Gwaii. It's sold at different places around the world, and it's used around the world. Because we're now in our, we're almost ready to do our third printing oh. of it. Yeah, oh, that's really cool. <laughs> um, and we know that it's been uh, used as a resource for as a, for educators across the world. Um, but the I think the intended. The intended audience was for teachers to try to think about how they might use it um, on Haida Gwaii, but also as examples for how people in other places in Canada can think about how do you bring mathematics, community, and culture together. And this the problems in here are specific to the place of Haida Gwaii. Um, so they're not going to be as um, connected in the same way to those who, who are in the prairies or in the, the Kootenai territory. You know, in other places or on the east coast of Canada, for example. But it gives an example of how you can think about how you could create something similar to that. I think the book supports educators uh, by giving them possibilities for thinking about mathematics in places other than the textbook and thinking about how they can bring uh, community and culture together. And you can do that in many different contexts in many different ways. And this is just one possibility and one example of what that could look like. So the book is organized around, um, oh, I don't know, I don't, there's probably like 10 or 12 mathematical adventures that are connected to uh, stories told by elders. And the story told by the elder um, sort of starts off first, like with an image or some quotes based on interviews with elders in the community. Um, and then that follows up with a, with a, a mathematical adventure. So the indigenous knowledge and stories are kind of throughout the whole book. Uh, it's not just one section of it, like it's embedded in the whole book. And it, it follows with thinking about um, how everything is connected. And it tells that story through the, use, through, the, through the canoe and the importance of the canoe to Haida culture. So each of these uh, stories and it sets up something that has to do with the canoe within an elder told as a story. So for example, here is a, an image of a, of a canoe with a bentwood box. And the box is made from one piece of wood. That's why it's called a bentwood box. And this is the design on the front of it. And it would be used in the canoe to store various items um, and uh, for the various trips that they would take to try to find food or to gather uh, berries, for example. Um, and then, yeah, and actually this story is that if people didn't have enough berries picked to serve their village, they would have to travel by canoe to different areas to pick them. So that kind of starts off like how the that would box and the canoe were together, and then what would be a mathematical story around that, 
was, is related to how to create this out of one piece of wood and how would the dimensions of this box change based on different shapes of wood, lengths or widths. Mm -hmm. you know, what, would the, what would the volume, how would the volume change? Um, so each, uh, each of these is, is written by a teacher who, in conversation with an elder uh, or personal conversation with an elder or uh, through research, gather some of these quotes and stories of elders and that sort of frames the, the problem itself. So there are questions about building canoes, um, questions about scale, tide, the nice ones about tide and the height of moons and how that is used to be able for food gathering. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that's answering your question. This is more about how the yeah, book is organized. It's, okay. it's so we <laughs> embedded within it, all the indigenous knowledge. Yeah. And then there's a, a section here on language because language is, is a big part of culture um, at the back. So a little bit here about all the different words for rain and tide um, in both dialects, the North um, in Masset and in Skidigat of the Haida language. So uh, it gives some, some connections to that. So then we also have a historical timeline for first contact and then up to the current when the book was published. So all of this can be used uh, for sources of mathematical problems. So one activity that we've tried is just taking some of these dates of uh, when the potlatch was banned, for example, or when the, when um, when there were when the um, Indian Act consolidated all the laws relating to Indians, for example. And we took these various dates and then asked teachers to be able to organize them on a timeline, um, and then that helped them think more about some of the events that occurred across the time, as well as where they would be placed um, proportionally or not. I think one measurement of success is that we're in almost in our third grading. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then the other, I think, is um, just, I guess, the feedback that we get from people all over the place, uh, all over the world, asking for um, examples of how, this as an example of how they might be able to create something similar in their own context. Um, the other, so, so I think using it so for teachers, libraries, districts, thinking of this as an example. The other, I think, um, indicator of success is how um, students on Haida Gwaii have received it. And the story, it was a nice story of, a, of a, that Joanne, who's the um, co-editor of the book, Joanne Yovanovich, who's now a superintendent on Haida Gwaii, um, she uh, tells a nice story of how they got all the boxes of these books arrived at one of the schools. And they're big boxes and they were starting to unpack them and just opening them up. And a little guy came in who was kind of leaving from one class to another and taking the long route, you know, <laughs> to go to the washroom maybe and come mm -hmm. back again and notice that they were unpacking the boxes. And he said, hey, you know, what are you doing? And they said, oh, we're just unpacking some boxes of books. Would you like to help? He says, sure. And he came over and helped. and he took out one of the books and opened it up and said, oh, wow, there's my uncle, I know this guy. And he should have seen the smile on his oh. face, you know, and he sat down in the chair and sat there for the next 15 minutes or so just looking at the book and was just so excited about it. So that idea of how a resource for Haida Gwaii or for, for the students and teachers on Haida Gwaii in the community of a place that um, represents there, you know, yeah. it's not from elsewhere, and it doesn't represent cultures from elsewhere that's always kind of imported in, it's, it's there. And so to see those images of, of um, something that you recognize and you value and you can connect to uh, was, you know, a great indicator. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then also the teachers are asking for more. And so um, because of the high turnover uh, of teachers, I don't think there are many teachers currently still on Haida Gwaii who participated in creating this book, but there's an interest in pursuing uh, another which focuses on the Haida um, calendar for food gathering. So now we're working with a group of teachers to think about how we can use this calendar as a, as a structure for thinking about, yeah, uh, math problems connected to science. The impact, as I mentioned earlier, mm -hmm. is in the process and participating in creating it. And it gave the teachers there an opportunity to connect with community members in a way they hadn't before. So I think that that, so that it's the doing of it that I think has lived on, you know, and, the, and the, those who participated in creating it have taken that with them. Um, and I hope the same will happen for this other, this mm -hmm. other book. 
the 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 fact that this is in its third printing and it's just a small book and we've never advertised it and it's like not on Amazon you know? um, and you have to buy it with a check you know, yeah <laughs> who uses checks anymore right <laughs> just because it's the district that's and it's just it's still like a nonprofit so the district has has published it so the fact that it's still going and there's still interest in it too I think has exceeded our expectations for what it this um, came as a result of probably four years of working together with the district in different ways, and so um, we had we met regularly with a group of teachers who participated in this. But then, for about a year, thinking about different ways in which we can connect math, community, and culture, and then Joanne Archibald and I uh, teamed together to to offer a course on how to buy a math. Level. But it was a, a course that could be count towards the master's level. Mm -hmm. um, and many of the teachers who participated in this participated in that course. And we kind of made a, like an assignment or something connected to that. Uh, and then we continued to work on it and then we came up with this, this book. So it required um, a lot of, you know, I mean, many years of building those relationships beforehand to get the community thinking about and, you know, supporting and thinking about uh, where mathematics lives in these various contexts and how it can live outside the textbook. Um, and then it's continued on, like so that even though those teachers have left, all the schools still have these copies of the book. It isn't the same because the teachers now using the book have, didn't create it. Mm -hmm. you know? So it's, it's different. So it needs, it, I think it really does need that continual process of doing, you know, and participating in the making of it. Um, just like a hide a mask or it needs to it, it, it can live itself, but it needs to be danced, you know, or it needs to have that life in it that continues on. Um, and the and the people who c help create that are the ones who can kind of keep it going. So that's why I think the, the next book, looking at the food gathering calendar, will be something that kind of continues on from this. Um, and the, 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 the relationships continue, even though that funding for that project and this book had ended. You know, there's still, it's many years now later since first that this came out in 2011, I think. Um, but it's still very current and it's still very connected and it still uh, keeps us going and thinking about other possibilities. Yeah. It's, it isn't something that's easy to end, <laughs> which is good. <laughs> we met like for four years before, then the course and the book, and then it's been many years since, yeah. So it's it's been part of a long uh, journey and a long process and a very rewarding and inspiring one that's helping us think more about uh, the, the mathematics of place and what place and land can help us learn more about ourselves and our relationships with each other and, and the human and non-human. So it's really extended our thinking, I think, about the possibilities. I think that it contributes to Indigenous education and helping uh, both uh, Indigenous teachers with indigenous ancestry and those with, uh, with not settlers, um, ways of kind of learning more about their own cultures and how this kind of idea of reconciliation of how we can come together um, and, and giving it a safe place to be able to ask those difficult questions um, and giving some kind of uh, structure or organization to be able to make it possible to connect with community in ways that you may not do otherwise, you know, so you, you may not feel like you can just go up and ask somebody a question like that. Um, but, the, but participating in the project allowed for that and it gave room for both community members and uh, teachers and elders to be able to come together to ask those difficult questions and, be, and to be able to sh share their, um, their not knowing, you know, in a, in a way that allowed for the those critical, mm -hmm. difficult um, challenging uh, questions to be explored, and it, and I would say it happened for both uh, teachers who are of high ancestry and those who didn't, who aren't. Um, so, for those who are of high ancestry, for example, it, it allowed them to gave them openings to be able to explore some of their own cultural practices that were related and, and considered to be mathematical, or to see the mathematics in something that perhaps before uh, in the mathematics was 
not as explicit, you know, so kind of kind of tease that out. So for example, Joanne uh, Ivanovich created a whole book around the mathematics of creating a button blanket mm -hmm. and all the questions that were mathematical that were needed for her to create this uh, graduating blanket for her son. So, so it was those kinds of things that kind of helped us begin to think about creating this place to challenge those difficult ideas and questions related to Indigenous education. Um, and I think that those are really key. Those are important for people to be able to have those openings. And then for non-Indigenous, non-Haida teachers to begin to feel the power and um, the power of mathematics in that place and be able to see the, op the opportunities to learn about culture through mathematics and to also think about how um, mathematics provides that opportunity to think about culture. So that's a really interesting relationship. Mm -hmm. And for them to challenge their own ideas about what it means to be a settler. So one teacher, for example, said that she had been living on Haida Hawaii for 20 years and still feels that she does not know enough to, about the culture and the land and the people to be able to participate in it. So, you know, being able to share that and talk mm -hmm. about it and think, okay, what do I need to learn more about? You know, what are my own, you know, to what extent is my own, are my own actions complicit in how I perpetuate these ideas um, in my teaching of mathematics? Mm -hmm. So those were, I'd say, I would say that those are the examples of thinking about how this contributes to Indigenous education for the for people in Haida Gwaii. I'm not as sure about how other people are using the book. I mean, that would be a really interesting project is to call them up and say, you know, what, yeah. what are you doing with it? <laughs> and what, um, how is it helping you in your context in the interior, for example, or in Australia? I know um, it's been given as gifts to teachers in other uh, contexts, particularly in Australia, so it would be interesting to see here more about that. I know I, they like it um, from what I've heard, but I don't know how they're using it. This kind of work is, um, gives an opportunity to help give examples of how mathematics is not a cultural, it's not culture free, it's not de decontextualized, and that it is, um, and that there are many kinds of mathematics. So, and that mathematics is, is created or developed in relationship to the land and the place. And so, it, so what is emphasized and what is noticed depends on where you are. And this is a good example of that. Um, and even though we can share this kind of, this more abstractness of what mathematics mm -hmm. might be, it can also be very localized in terms of thinking about its relationship and to the, and to this, this particular place.